Hi, Misha here, and kind of been my continuing look at the helicopters of the French Army and Navy. I did look at the uh, Super, I stuck it, Super Frelon of the French Navy. This was their medium transport, big old helicopter, made by Sud. It first flew at the end of 1962 and as I said in that video another project closely related and just a little behind it in development was the what will become the AS330 Puma initially known as the SE3300 when it was a prototype and uh, this model you've seen before, this is my 172 scale die cast from Corgi. It's actually of a early 70s British Westland assembled Puma, built from French parts, but in Britain. And we'll also look at this so-called Super Puma. This is the AS332. Which would soon replace the original Puma in France, although not in England. And this model is 172 scale die cast from Altea. So it's new at least. And I don't want to run over the same ground, but there and again, I kind of have to a bit. The Puma really was just a drawing board sketch out in the early 60s but in 1963 the French government got behind it and kind of funded the project for Sud and the idea was to produce a medium transport helicopter that could carry up to 20 troops be easy to maintain be very fast and versatile maneuverable so a little more acrobatic and whatnot. And the prototype would first fly in 1965, proving itself very capable. So as they set up the production line, Britain became interested in an agreement was signed in 1967 with Westland. Westland would assemble these using French parts for the British, primarily the RAF. Also, Westland would make some small components and whatnot for Sud, later Aerospecial, in France. And then in 1968, production was up and running, and the first examples were delivered to the French Air Force. And later, French Navy would buy some as well. And they would start to be introduced into service in 1969. Britain would adopt the Puma, and it would put, start to put it in service in 1971. And this model's from 1973, so it would have been pretty much first generation style. And already by 1974, this was a very successful helicopter. It was the number one selling transport helicopter in Europe. A number had been, of course, sold to the militaries of France and uh, Britain. And also civilian customers. These were actually popular for transporting people to and from oil rigs, oil platforms in the ocean, because they were two turbo shaft engines, so quite safe to operate over water, and because they were originally designed to be easy to maintain. Basically, they, they made the parts as durable as they could, and the ones that they knew would have to be serviced on a regular basis, they made them easy to get to. And so it had both success in the military and civilian commercial markets. To that end, Era Special started working on improving it in 1974. 
which would ultimately lead to this a short time later. But in the interim, it's worth saying that um, the French Air Force did use these, for example, in 1974, Operation Barracuda. Central African nations, they used these in an assault team to take over government buildings quite successfully. Throughout the 80s, these were used by French special forces. Alongside their British counterparts, these were deployed in Operation Desert Shield 1990 and Operation Desert Storm in 1991. They were primarily used for search and rescue. They would continue to be used in former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. In 1994, there was a pretty high-profile case where in Bosnia where uh, French... Special Forces Pumas were sent in to rescue a British downed pilot of a Sea Harrier along with a British SAS extraction team successfully. Twenty of them were instrumental in Kosovo in 1999. And they continued to be used throughout the early 21st century by both the French Navy and Air Force. And they started to be phased out beginning around 2010. However, some are still in uh, service to this day. As of 2016, at least 20 were still in the French Air Force. I'm not sure at this point in early 2020 how many are left but um, still still around and of course they're still in uh, British service as well so yeah let's talk about its super cousin here then we'll look at some specs and uh, yeah wrap things up well Aero Special first announced this project at the Paris Air Show in 19 19- 75. Initially, I think they were just trying to have a upgraded version of the original Puma, but it very quickly evolved into the Super Puma, basically a whole new model. They gave it two more powerful engines, and they went to composite rotor blades, quite a modern thing in the 70s. They also just kind of made everything stronger. Uh, For a civilian role, just better able to survive accidents, impacts, you know, bird strikes or crash landings. And from a military role, better able to take damage on the battlefield. It's just a stronger, more durable aircraft with uh, more modern rudder blades and more powerful engines and drive system and all that. In... September of 1977, the prototype model 331 flew, and this was basically just the original Puma, but with the new upgraded engines that they were wanting to work with. So it wasn't, it was kind of a pre pre. The first prototype of the official model 332 flew. Just over a year later, on September 13th, 1978, and in 1980, it was introduced into the production line and becoming their new flagship medium transport helicopter. It's also at this time that the uh, Super Frelon would go out of production. And for a time, they would produce the Puma and Super Puma side by side. And Super Puma would have two versions, at least basics. They would be a short cabin and a long cabin. The short cabin would be the same as the original Puma. So it would have a crew of two to three and have the cabin capacity for 15 to 16 persons. 
the long cabin would have up to 20 and some places report 24 persons in the cabin I'm sure it just has to do with comfort and you know overall weight obviously the benefits of the long cabin are clear the short cabin was basically to you take advantage of the new engines these were able to operate so-called hot and dry they were able to have better performance better lift better capabilities in various environments they discovered that the new engines gave better speed and range and they had a lower fuel consumption thanks to modernizations and of course all on top of a more modern cockpit and um, a more durable airframe by 1981 the first civilian Super Puma was delivered and in 1983 one of the first French military units the rapid response unit was established to kind of protect French assets especially in Africa and the Middle East and also respond to help French allies and they would be issued up to 30 Super Pumas these, of course, would also be used in the Gulf War alongside the Puma. And uh, were called upon in various points and times in the 1990s and 2000s when a larger helicopter was needed. The French Navy would also have some Super Pumas. The 332B would be the basic short cabin army air force variant the 332f would be the anti-shipping anti-submarine naval variant and the 332m would be the basic militarized long cabin variant with what they call an airliner interior so basically passengers with some level of comfort inside These would be, you know, Aero Special would be taken over. You would become Eurocopter, and then today would be Airbus. They're still officially in uh, in production. In 2012, the French government would allocate funds to a program to upgrade 23 French Army Super Pumas and three French Air Force. Now it's worth pointing out names. In the 1980s, this was the Super Puma. In 1990, to kind of distinguish the civilian and the military lines, they were rebranded as the AS-532 Cougar. And that, of course, would have its own series. It's also worth pointing out that in 1983, sales of the Super Puma overtook sales of the original Puma. And with that, the original Puma line was ended in 1987. So into the 90s, the Super Puma was the go. Also, quite interestingly, in 2015, Airbus, now owners of this, would transfer the production line to Romania. Now, Romania had been producing the Puma and Super Puma under license for a number of years at this point making over 90 of the originals and uh, the reason for the transfer for one thing this is an older design but there's still enough of a demand I guess they didn't want to cancel it altogether so they kind of shifted it to a place where labor was cheaper and where they already knew how to build them so it's still a product they're keeping on the catalog in fact they've introduced an economical version known as the the uh, 332C1 and yeah much like with the Puma these are still in French military service today although have been mostly phased out but they're, they're still around doing the thing and pretty cool besides so what about performance and specs? Well both of these are 
more transport than outright attack combat helicopters. But that said, both can be armed with coaxial 30 caliber machine guns or side mounted 20 millimeter cannon. Also, the navalized versions of each can have uh, anti ship or anti submarine weapons. But their main thing is their transport. And like I said, they can carry anywhere from 15 on the low end for the short cabin up to as many as 24 weight permitting on the long cabin. The uh, long cabin is about two and a half feet longer overall. Again, crew of two to three depending on the mission, but they can easily operate with just two. Max speed for the original Puma is around 159 miles per hour with a cruise speed of around 154. Has a maximum altitude of about 15,700 feet, give or take, depending on the load. So, quite a bit more than the earlier helicopters of the day. And uh, they would produce just under 700 of these total, including the ones produced under license in England by Westland. As for the Super, or a little bit faster, we can go over 170 miles per hour, about 171. Cruise speed is around 155 to 160. Again, it has more range, but our fuel consumption on top of that. We also have a higher altitude. Like I said, it's uh, able to operate hot and dry. It can, can't can quite make it up to 17,000 feet, but it can get close. So quite respectable for a helicopter. Even the most modern ones like the NH-90 are 20,000 feet, so... But very cool and very successful. It's estimated that about a thousand have been produced over the years, including licensed production in places like Romania. And the, honestly, there's been as much or more interest from the civilian market on both of these, the private sector, as there has been for the military. But even then, quite a few militaries have deployed the Puma and Super Puma. They're just, they're easy to operate. They're new enough to not be obsolescent, but, you know, they're, they're tried and true technologies, and compared to some of the newfangled helicopters, they're quite a bit more affordable. And again, I know I'd already covered this helicopter in my Westland video, but I wanted to talk about the, uh, the French use. And just give it its just due. I wrap up by comparing the models a little bit. The Corgi model is typical Corgi greatness. It's pretty much all metal body. Very heavy duty die cast. It does have uh, not only pilot figures, but it also has crew figures in the back with opening side doors. And it has the gear up or down, your choice of how to display. As compared with the Altea, which is pretty much as you see it here, it comes gear fixed down. Uh, no crew figures, uh, no opening doors. It does have the rotating uh, rotor blades at least. Both uh, main and tail. It does also come with a stand like the Corgi. Sometimes these Corgis come with uh, 
metal stands sometimes they come with plastic this one's plastic but I know at least one of my links has a metal this is definitely you know plastic but and the detail level is not quite as nice it's not quite as heavy duty metal but a Corgi Puma these days is going to be anywhere from 60 to 80 bucks depending on which variant you get compared with the Altea which is anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks or sometimes 35 bucks depending on where you get it so you're looking at less than half the price and I think for the money you get a good thing and again Altea has a really cool helicopter range and as I've said in other videos I think they hit that sweet spot they're a little nicer than a Mercum and while they're not uh, as nice as a Corgi they don't look like dog shit next to them either. I, I think they're they're quite nice and they feel good and they seem to be pretty durable for what they are. So yeah, that's why I've got both. I've got my my French Super Puma and uh, actually two of the British Pumas. One thing I didn't mention, there is like a little extra little kind of wing or fin vertically under the tail on a Super Puma. Also the landing gear are a little bit different shape. There's, there's differences. They are different choppers, but uh, you can also see how they're very similar. But yeah, if you'd like to hear more about the British use, I've got a full video on that, especially its use in the Gulf War. And if you'd like to hear more ramblings about uh, French helicopters, I've got a few videos. The Alouette 1 and, or 2 and 3, the Super Frail on here. Good stuff like that. So, uh, appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. And please, tune in again next time. This is Misha, and I'll see you then.